Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. Okay. Whew. Let me just. Hi. Welcome, everybody. Thank you guys so much for joining us. I'm just going to wait for a few more people. Um, to before we begin sorry for the slight delay we were having a few technical difficulties but we're here it's, it's okay it's all right please do make use of the chat because we would love to see all your questions for talia when she joins um us um i'll add her i'll add her see i'm so excited <sighs> hi yasmin Hello, everybody. Okay, so um, welcome to um, Becca's Brunch YouTube channel. Thank you so much for joining us today for our series, A Drink With. Um, this is an interview that's going to be part of our, well, that is part of our Lit Black Girl season, in which we are celebrating all things literature throughout the month of April. Hence our great, wonderful, amazing guest, Emma. I'm excited too, so yeah. Um, <laughs> we do have we do have a lot of other events during the season so do check out our instagram and our event right page and you know just stay in the know before i bring on our very special guest i'm actually fangirling guys like my heart is like kick, 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 kick. but uh before we bring on our special guest if you haven't already please subscribe to our channel um because we're trying to get our subscribers up and please like this video as well um so i'm thrilled today to be having a chat with new york times best-selling author um romance author um inclusive protagonist we love her um i'm really pleased to introduce talia hibbert i'm gonna add her hi talia hi. how are you <laughs> i'm great thanks how are you oh my gosh thank you so much for joining us no thank, thank you for having me i'm excited I know, right? I'm like, oh, honestly, when uh, I got told that you have to do this, I was like, oh my gosh, I love her so much. This is going to be great. Oh, thank you. Um, <laughs> but welcome. Welcome to Black Girls Brunch. Welcome to our live stream. Um, how's your day? You okay? It's good? Yeah, it's good. It's a great day. Having fun. I've got some orange juice and fake Prosecco, so. <laughs> how does it taste? Because I was a bit concerned because I hadn't tried that one yet. So I was like, I hope it's like nice. No, it's really good. It's amazing. Okay. Ten out of ten. Thank you. I'm on my, I can't lie, I'm on my water. I've been trying to drink um, a gallon oh, wow. today. So um, I can't bring you in the alcohol, but <laughs> no, we're still bad bees. It's okay. <laughs> here, here. Um, in the non-alcohol, I should say. Um, okay, so let's get into it. Um, the comment section is going crazy, which is lovely. Um, so, yes, first of all, uh, I think my first question for you um, is, why writing? Like, what made you want to be an author? Gosh, it's kind of a long and convoluted story, but um, <laughs> the, the short version is that I'm not really good at other things. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> you know yeah. when you feel like you just have like this one thing that is like your thing and everything else you kind of are gently terrible at it just felt natural um and also you know I was a really big bookworm growing up so writers were kind of like rock stars to me so my dream job was always to be a writer um and for a long time I didn't think that I could do it but God, the sunlight from my window is looking really weird right now. Oh, um, you look lovely. Lovely. Oh, thank gorgeous. you. <laughs> so do you. Thanks. Um, yeah, I thought I couldn't do it, but then when I was in my last year of uni, like lots of things kind of conspired to push me to try and it worked out. So um, I'm still here. <laughs> Yay! And we're, we're very happy that you're still here. <laughs> I love that you said gently terrible. I, I feel like I need to add that phrase to my vocabulary. <laughs> No, her, yes, gently terrible. Um, so you're a writer full time um, yeah. now. Yeah. How like how did you? Was it always the case? Like, how did that start, or how did that become? <laughs> um, so I started self publishing in my last year of university, and one of the reasons was that I knew you know graduation's coming up, and I needed a job. Um, and I do have a disability and my experiences in the workforce had not been like amazing because of that. So I thought that working for myself would be the goal. 
So I spent that year kind of trying my best to make it a career that I could keep going with after I graduated. Um, and it kind of worked. I mean, I was living at my mum's house, so I had a lot of help, obviously, but I was able to just keep going, which was great. Um, I mean, kind of worked as a bit of a statement, <laughs> but sure, we'll go with it. It really worked. That's amazing. Um, and it's funny that you said that, you know, you 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 kept um, like working um, and you had to make it work because you, you needed a job. And when I looked at your website, I saw, I was looking, just making sure, you know, just researching and stuff. And I saw you had like nine books come out, one um, like in 2018. And I was like, how, you've consistently released three, four, like books, multiple books a year. How, how do you do that? How long do you write for? Like, how long does it take you to finish a novel? <laughs> I mean, um, I've definitely yeah. slowed down lately with the pandemic and everything. Like, um, that really hit me hard <laughs> in the <Okay>. productivity. <laughs> but prior, especially in like that first year when I started out, like I said, I was like, this very much needs to work. <laughs> so I researched and one of the best strategies I could find for kind of establishing a foothold was to publish very quickly. So I was like, okay, I guess that's what I'm gonna do. Um, and that, I'm never really sure looking back how I did write so fast, because I definitely don't write that fast now. Like, desperation, <laughs> there's a lot to say for it as a motivator. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you, but, like, you didn't start off with a massive platform, and it's interesting that you said, like, obviously you self-published, which is, um, is wonderful, it's amazing. So how did it, like, how did the growth happen? Like, how... How did it happen? There were a few things. So first of all, I'm really lucky that the indie community in romance, and I'm sure it's probably the same in other genres, is just so welcoming. And there's so much information out there that authors are just sharing that I feel like in other industries, people would pay big money to learn these kind of marketing techniques and writing advice and things like that, that other authors were just kind of giving out to be helpful. So. You know, I have those people to thank for a lot of the things that I learned. Um, and the main things that I implemented were, like I said, publishing really fast, making sure that my books felt very, you know, it was hard to drill down to exactly the kind of writer that I wanted to be. And then making sure that everything about my books and like my brand hit that really hard. Um, and so that with every book you release, you're kind of, right um readers are like sticking to you and following mm -hmm. you through to the next book um and one key thing with that was actually writing in series which i didn't naturally do and didn't want to do but in the yeah. end i was like oh, i'm gonna have to do this and see if it works and it did <laughs> and also i got a lot of help with promotion on social media from other authors as well oh wow amazing which was like majorly helpful um like i said the community is amazing and i feel like black indie authors especially we're all like doing the most to uplift each other and share kind of audiences yeah. so um, it was definitely multiple things i think wow thank you that was a it was a big answer i'm trying to think about <laughs> parts of that. i'm gonna um pick out what was it this? yeah about the series as well, I think as well for you is that you do have a very unique voice and a specific writing style. So once someone finds one of your books, it's like it becomes Moorish, you know, it's not hard to <laughs> want to read the next one and the next one, the next one. And it's great that you have such a wide catalogue of books because it means there's lots for people to read as well. So um, that's amazing. Thank you. Um, what what influences you in your writing? So many things. First and foremost, the fact that I've been reading romance since I was 12. <laughs> so, you know, and sometimes, especially as a kid, like a teenager, I'd go through phases where I'd fixate on things. And a lot of the time it was a particular romance author I'd just discovered. So by the time I started writing, I was like, eat, sleeping, breathing romance. <laughs> And I can always see like all of my favorite authors in elements of the choices that I make. Um, so definitely, you know, Julia Quinn was the first romance author I ever read. And 
She's like, hi, banter, which I think is reflected in my books. Um, Meg Cabot is another one I loved when I was reading YA, uh, The Princess Diaries, which I, I think Meg. everyone loves. <laughs> and then I discovered like her adult books as well. Um, and then also like when I first kind of discovered more diverse romance, that was a huge influence on me. Authors like Rebecca Weatherspoon, Alicia Rye, really like changed the way I thought about how I myself could write romance. Um, and then, you know, on top of those authors, I feel like I've always been inspired by TV. I just really mm. like TV. <laughs> um, so like when I was growing up, my mum would always have like sci-fi channels on. So we'd watch like Star Trek, uh, Xena Warrior Princess. And I feel I like they had, <laughs> they had good relationships. Yeah. Yeah, I love Zine the Warrior Princess. We used to act her out, me and my cousins. And so <laughs> we just thought we were that cool. Um, so you basically eat, breathe, sleep romance um, <laughs> since you were a child, which is great. Absolutely no shame in that. Have you ever wanted to delve into a different genre? Have you delved into a different genre? Um, I feel like romance, the great thing about romance is like any genre can kind of become romance if that makes sense mm -hmm. so I have like a real love for sci-fi fantasy um but I feel like even if I did delve into those genres which I think I would like to do it would always be with like romance at its heart because I'm just yeah. that's my thing <laughs> and we love it but I mean everyone <laughs> likes a good love story it's like and with the twists and the turns so and yeah I definitely see what you mean any genre could also be a romance or a romantic yeah, yeah. novel. Yeah, <laughs> that is, no, that's just, it's true. You're right, let me go back to more questions. I've got, oh my God, I've got so many questions for you and I'm sure <laughs> people in the chat have so many questions as well. So we're just gonna literally power through them. Um, so, oh, I had a cheeky question, but I'm not sure if, <laughs> <laughs> I always wonder, like I just always wondered this with authors. Um, have you written any other books under a different name, like not as you? Um, I haven't, but if I had, I would probably lie about it. So. <laughs> Fair enough. So that okay, I hear it. Yeah, I'd probably do that too. <laughs> um, so you mentioned a little bit before about lockdown and yeah, the pandemic and stuff. We won't touch on it too much because this is a loving space. But um, has ha has it like affected your? productivity and like for writing or has it yeah definitely yeah. like it's just such a weight of yeah. knowing terrible things are happening and waiting for more terrible things to happen and not having your usual methods to alleviate the bad feelings about the terrible things just mm. a perfect storm of horribleness <laughs> yeah I, I can imagine in in that not even in that but just in general so where apart from writing where else do you find joy like what do you find joy in um well pre-pandemic my big thing was going to the cinema we went to the cinema like at least once a week um and i also really loved going for walks or just being outside hanging out with people outside um but now obviously those things you can't always do or at all yeah. i haven't been to the cinema in forever <laughs> Um, so now I play Animal Crossing, which is like being outside and socializing with people, but not really. <laughs> it is. It's how much millennials do. It's fine. <laughs> no, I think, I think it's really important as well, because especially where obviously you love writing, but where that is now become your work, it's also good to have things outside of that that bring you joy and not just get in that cloud of work, 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 especially <laughs> in this in this time. Um, okay, right, let's talk about books because we're here, like, books. So um, your most, by the way, sorry, there's wind chimes outside my window, just, just ignore them. <laughs> so your most, the latest book, um, actor age Eve Brown. Um, I just finished it. It was great. I loved it, obviously. Um, are any of your characters based on real people? Not really, but I feel like sometimes elements of people kind of inspire elements of characters, but overall, no. 
Okay, that's interesting. Okay, I, I, I thought he was going to be like, yes, my cousin. Da, da, da. <laughs> but then again, if it was, you probably couldn't say. So, yeah. That's true. <laughs> um, even though we love, we love, we love them all. Um, how do you like go about, I guess, as part of a ge- ge- more general question, how do you choose the names of the characters? Ah, well, it's funny that we just mentioned cousins and now you bring that up. So. No way. <laughs> Um, it definitely depends and with my with my kind of main characters it tends to be a mix of like what I feel fits the vibe of the character maybe some symbolism in the name um, Mm. or maybe just like something about the sound kind of feels right Mm. but um, then when I'm naming side characters I kind of can't be bothered so I do tend to choose names of my cousins (laughs) <laughs> just throw them in but I I kind of wrote myself into a corner recently because I named my main character's cousin Liam because I have a cousin called Liam so I was like okay right. it's called Liam and then I realized that in this new series I'm gonna write Liam as a love interest so now I have to write a hero who's named after my cousin oh my gosh. <laughs> Okay, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. I was gonna say don't let him read it, but then all of your love interests are great, so maybe do let him read it. No, okay, <laughs> don't let him read it. No. <laughs> um, so I've, I've been, I'm keeping an eye on the chat, guys. Um, I saw someone ask, um, what your planning process is, um, for writing, and I think it leads well into my next question. So if you can answer that one first, and then we can. Swim over there. So my planning process does vary depending on the book. And I feel like the more I write, the more I kind of change and fine tune it. Um, But for like a typical full length kind of romantic comedy, which is what I'm focusing on now, I kind of half plan and half don't. So I'll decide things like what are my key tropes I'm going to use? What are my two main characters, their quirks, their wants, their needs? And then I'll try and figure out the main beats of the story, like, you know, how or why are they going to come together? Um, Mm. What problems are they going to have? How do I want it to end, kind of? Um, But once I've got that in place, I'll start writing and I will kind of plan each section of the story immediately before I write it, just to make it feel a bit more exciting. That is really cool. I I don't think I've actually heard um, it be done like that. That's really cool. So you you plan it almost in chunks, write that chunk and then move. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Do, do, you, do you know what's going to happen? Like, kind of. Okay. Like, so I'm writing one at the minute um, and I've kind of split it in my head into like the the beginning, like the setup and then them getting to know each other and then them kind of getting into each other. <laughs> 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 yes so, know your books well like, <laughs> so I have in my head like okay I want them to go to a canal and they're going to walk and then a dog is going to have a crisis and then they're going to kiss um, and that's the section so then I kind of plan the section and then it's done and then I move on to the next one Ooh, okay thank you um, I mean my next question is invalid then because I was going to say how do you develop plot but it. <laughs> You've answered it basically. Um, specifically with the Brown sisters, um, because they're the latest. Let's just stick with them for a minute. Um, how did you come up with their titles? Did you come up with the titles before you wrote the book? Or so yeah. it all kind of started with Chloe's book, and I had this idea that I was gonna write a very rom-com kind of book. And so I was thinking about the title and I wanted her name to be in the title because I'd seen it done and I thought it was cute. Um, and then kind of after a little drafting session, Get Alive Chloe Brown came to me and I thought it sounded fun and I liked the rhythm. Um, but after that, and that was all kind of decided on the book came out, I was like, oh, now I have to name the other two books and I don't know what to do. <laughs> so my editor helped. <laughs> Well, I, I mean, it is fun. You're right. It is, it is fun. And they all they all match. And it's just, yeah, it's great. But well done. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> um, so obviously, 
actually this is another cheeky question but i'm gonna answer it ask it anyway <laughs> is the series finished are we can we expect anything more from these sisters can you so tell us? the brown sister series is technically finished um but eve's book is set so, in a small town called skybriar yes. um, and so i'm writing a series that's kind of a spin-off that's set in yeah. skybriar so you do still see Eve specifically around. <laughs> I love Eve. Okay, no, that's exciting. <laughs> that is really exciting. And I love I, I love how you do that, how you kind of like intertwine. But we also, like obviously, well, especially with the Brown Sisters, we find out how they're doing in the other books, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. So, because um, they have a special place in our heart. Um, <laughs> and also, just a cheeky thing from me, if you ever want to do an extra scene i'm talking about um chloe now if you ever want to do a little cute extra spin-off scene of chloe meeting red's mum for the first time i wouldn't be mad like i would i would that's support a good that. idea <laughs> <laughs> when i finished the book i was like okay hey, but i really needed to see that like do you know what i mean <laughs> so you can even just email it to me no one else needs to know just <laughs> I'm fine. um do you ever receive negative responses to your work or to yeah your writing oh my god yeah all the time <laughs> especially <laughs> you know when i now that i'm kind of with my last three books being traditionally published the publisher kind of keeps track of reviews and everything mm. but, but with my self-published books i if i want to kind of say everyone said these nice things. Then I have to go through the reviews and look for the quotes. So then ah. I also <laughs> see all the people who are like, this book sucked. <laughs> how do you deal with that? How do you, how do you, does it affect you? Badly. <laughs> um, I just get kind of sad and usually I like call my boyfriend in and I'm like, can you believe this? And then I get over it. <laughs> we don't listen to haters over here, okay? Just. <laughs> whatever um okay that's that, that's fair enough um well on the opposite spectrum of you know um bad reviews how like what career ac accomplishments are you most proud of to date because obviously we know there's gonna be lots more but to date <laughs> um gosh it's so weird because like pretty much everything that i've ever done from publishing my very first book to now feels like something that it sounds so corny just something that I literally dreamed of <laughs> like when I was a kid I literally this was my thing like my unrealistic dream job that I was determined to do and the fact that I'm actually doing it every so often I just have to stop and be like wow you know what that's pretty sick <laughs> oh, that's lovely that's really nice actually and it kind of it it's refreshing because obviously everyone has, you know, what de what they determine as being successful and what is a big accomplishment for them. But also they kind of forget the journey and forget this is stuff that they like prayed for, or manifested or whatever. So it's like nice to kind of have that holistic overall view. Uh, I like that. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to take it. Um, so um, I recently mentioned we did a self-publishing uh, video over on our Instagram, um, just, you know, taking people through steps of you know very sim simple steps of self-publishing and I mentioned that um after my kind of self I'm a self-published author as well after my big my first payout I treated myself um to a pair of designer shoes because you know had to <laughs> I wanted to ask what you had treated yourself to or what you special thing you did um after your first kind of pay out yeah paycheck <laughs> Well, I kind of had to be bullied into treating myself because <laughs> <laughs> my mum was like, this is amazing. Like, what are we going to do? And I was like, what do you mean? I don't have time to do things. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, like a one track mind. Once I'm doing something, I'm like, sorry, I can't do anything else. <laughs> so she kind of dragged me out for like, we have a lot of dessert cafes around here. Um, so she dragged me out and I had some cookie dough, which is my fave. <laughs> How 
that's nice. It's a, you have to mark it. Like it's a it's a it's a big thing. So that's nice. I'm glad she made you do something. That's your mum. <laughs> it always looks anyway, so it's fine. Um I have lots of questions, but I'm gonna just skim through the chat because it's been it's been popping. I don't know if you've noticed it, uh, and see what um they're being said and then I can go back to mine if that's okay. Okay. Um so Emma says, um, would you like to see your books transferred to the screen? If so, do you have a preference for either movie, mini series or television series? Okay, so yes, I would love that because I love TV and I love film. <laughs> um, and my preference depends on the book. So I have a book. I hope people are watching this who like do films and things because listen, I have a book <clears throat> called The Princess Trap and it was such an amazing film. <laughs> Talia, we're going to talk about that is my book, okay? Yeah. <laughs> That's my book. And I'm, waiting, I'm already going to, yeah. Yes, it would be an amazing film. You are okay. right. <laughs> we're going to talk about it because that's, yeah, yeah, I love it. Was, was that the first book I read? I think it was the first book. Yeah, I think it was the first. No, I read um, Chloe first and then that. Yeah, it's great. We love Cherry. She has a special place in our heart. <laughs> um, sorry, I got really excited there. Um, <laughs> someone says, several of your books include British Jamaican characters. Are you Jamaican? Yes, my, my dad is Jamaican and my mum is Sierra Leonean. So. I love it. I'm all Jamaican too, so it's great. Nice. Being Jamaican is great. Um, what else? Uh, oh, I've, I've just seen the question, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to touch on it a bit later. So we'll wait for that. We'll wait to answer that one. Um, if you could be one of your characters for a day, which or who would you choose? Ooh. Ooh. That is interesting. That is, yeah, that's a cool question. I've never even thought about that. Um, I suppose it depends. <laughs> See, I was going to say that I would be Chloe, but that would be so boring because my life is kind of Chloe's life anyway. <laughs> <laughs> But you I was like, Chloe. <laughs> Chloe's life sounds nice. But... <laughs> it's cool. I like Chloe. I love her. Yeah, Chloe's a good one. I'd be Terry because I want to be a princess. Well, I know she's not a princess, but yeah, I'd, I'd be <laughs> Not that anyone cares what I'd be, but anyway. <laughs> um, okay, let me go back to my questions because it kind of ties into the ones in the chat as well. So, Obviously, um, we love your books, and they're very fun, they're light, um, they're romance, they're steamy. I haven't even, yeah, we haven't even touched on the steamy part of it. <laughs> but, <laughs> they also do obviously touch on very important issues. You know, you've got, you've got autism, you've got domestic violence, you've got chronic illness or chronic pain. Um, why is it important to you, like, to highlight these issues? Because you could just write a romance book you know you don't have to have this extra meat to it so <laughs> why why do you have it I feel like one of my favorite things about romance is its ability to like show us who deserves to be loved mm. and like one really great thing about reading romance is that every so often you read something that kind of resonates with you and then you get to see that character or that person in that situation live happily ever after and it's such a good and inspiring feeling so you know I always aspire to do the same thing in my books and I find that when I'm building characters and the whole point is obviously to have these characters who are perfect for each other but something about their lives as individuals is kind of stopping them from achieving that happy ending for most of the book and so a lot of the time when I'm thinking what is that issue it's things that you know, that happen in real life, whether it's an aspect of their identity that they're fine with, but that has kind of impacted how they're treated, or whether it is something that they've really struggled with and that has kind of affected them negatively. That usually just kind of comes up in the characters' backstories for me, and mm. then I want to help them out with it. <laughs> Support them. <laughs> uh, oh, I don't know what happened. Oh, sorry, that was me. That was a slip of the, 
<laughs> I'm still getting used to the tech stuff. Um, <laughs> off of that, um, some, someone said, I love the neurodiversity and diverse sexualities. Could you tell us how you added these elements to your story? Um, yeah. Okay, so a lot of the time, um, kind of marginalised identities that show up with my main characters are not always, but like a lot of the time, um, identities that I also have because, I mean, largely because I'm really lazy and I don't have to research it as much. So I'm like, yeah, that'll work. <laughs> but also because, you know, it's nice to see yourself reflected in things. So like I am autistic which is one reason why I love writing autistic characters so much and I am queer which is probably why almost everyone I write is hella gay. <laughs> it's a smidge. It's just sprinkle. <laughs> and I, I love that, I love that you write what you know, um, you write who you are but also the power in that is that somebody out there is going to say okay I'm not alone and it sounds so cliche but Honestly, like the first time you see yourself, mm. it's like, oh my gosh, I'm here. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I, um, I love that you do that. So thank you for that. Um, someone says, let me just, someone, she says, I hope this is okay to ask. Um, we know you have a disability and the role that books is your relationship interracial. I love your books, especially because I see my marriage in them. You do not have to answer that question. Uh, <laughs> I read it as I was like reading. I didn't read it before. So we could just skip it. Um I think um I think relationships are private. Yeah. <laughs> I mean that's fair enough. I do I will say I find it funny that I write so many white boys that people are like, what's going on over there? <laughs> <laughs> I think if you need help, no drinking. <laughs> I, think, I think what I take from the relationships in the book is um, just about, you know, love more than anything. I don't really see, like, obviously, I see that as a fact, but it's about love, you know what I mean? And the main thing I see is about black women being loved. So as long as that's happening, we were okay. Um, so the steamier sides, Talia. Let's let's talk. Let's have a little <laughs> conversation. Um, how do, do your parents read your book? Like, do you no. how? No. <laughs> no. Because <laughs> I gave, I I told my mom to read one of your books. So I didn't. I didn't. I just told her, oh yeah, I love her. And then she came back and she was like. I was a bit, a bit steamy. Also. I was like, "Oh yeah, I forgot to warn you." Sorry. <laughs> she loved it. Don't worry, it's fine. She loved. It. Um, how do you? How do you write them? Do you like, yeah. <laughs> how do you think these things are? What's going on? Well, <laughs> first of all, I think it helps that, like I said, I've been reading romance so long, so I've read so many different sex scenes, like by different authors, with books with different vibes, different kinds of characters. Mm. I feel like that is how I learned kind of technically how to do it. But then the other thing is like my personal perspective when I'm doing it is to see that interaction as just an extension of the rest of their relationship. So if they have this dynamic or they talk to each other like this, then the sex scene is just that happening, but with mm. sex. Um, mm. And also, like, I, in a lot of my sex scenes, it's kind of like, not always, but usually it's when I make certain other realizations or feelings happen. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I just kind of have to look at it like that and also, like, make sure that it's something that I think is good because it's always going to be kind of embarrassing to think, oh, other people are reading my idea of sex, so <laughs> you might as well like it. <laughs> it needs to be enjoyable. Exactly. <laughs> no, that's really interesting. It's interesting to hear you kind of break it down so like pragmatically as well, because um obviously for the reader, we're reading it, we're finding ourselves, we're getting our lives, you know, living our, our fantasy. But <laughs> to think about the writing aspect of it as well, it's nice to kind of wrap your head around it and be like, okay, this is what's presented. And I have actually noticed that in the books, it is 
a turning point or a like it's kind of I don't know what to call it like an anchor or yeah it definitely is a turning point in the books for some sort of progression in the plot so yeah it's great keep it up <laughs> um, I'll go back to one of the questions in the chat before I get there so she says one of the most frustrating things for me in the genre is when characters don't talk to one another i noticed that you don't often use the miscommunication trope is that a conscious decision um i know that people have very strong feelings about miscommunication but as a reader i'm usually cool with it because i'm terrible at communication so i'm like yep absolutely i would do that i would totally make things way harder than they need to be <laughs> um I, I think when i'm writing i'm kind of like miscommunication is kind of hard to experience so I'm like oh, I don't want them to go through this because it sucks so that's probably why I stay away from it more yeah I think as a reader sometimes it's just like frustrating you know <laughs> sometimes you're just like oh, just just talk just do it stop it so um yeah it's, it is good um Larissa says Talking about seeing yourself in entertainment, so we're going back to kind of representation and writing yourself. She says, what is your first memory of recognising yourself in a book, a movie or a TV show? The first time that I really felt like, like was like, oh, that's me. And it, it kind of wasn't, but at the time it very much was, <laughs> is um, when I watched Mulan as a kid, I was like obsessed with Mulan because First, I loved Disney princesses, but obviously at the time there was not a black Disney princess. Um, and my mum is also Romani, so Esmeralda I was way into, but she was not a princess. <laughs> and as it happens, Milan wasn't a princess either, but <laughs> because she was... I don't know if other people feel this way about Mulan, but it feels like such a gay story. <laughs> it does. And Mulan is my favorite Disney princess. She's a princess in my head. So I'm here with you, but it does. Right. So I was like, this, this is great. <laughs> and you know, Mulan's not white. So technically she's just like me and we are the same person. <laughs> Do you know what? It's actually interesting you said that because I know a few um, black women whose favourite Disney princess is Mulan and, I, and like she's mine and I hadn't actually put um, the fact that obviously we didn't have a black princess and maybe that that, that, that link is quite interesting, um, especially because when we did get a black princess, she was a frog. It was up and down. It was a frog. <laughs> Great music though. Um, <laughs> someone says you've been self-publishing for so long before your brilliance was before your brilliance was finally recognised. Was there ever a time you wanted to give up? If so, how were you able to push through? Not at all, because you know, for me, self-publishing, I would have been happy to self-publish forever because mm. I think self-publishing is amazing and like a lot of my favorite authors are self-published yeah. um so the fact that I was able to like self-publish books and that was my job and I could just keep doing that I was like on cloud nothing <laughs> still am <laughs> um but you know what what sometimes made me want to give up in the past was more kind of creative frustration and like a fear that I wouldn't be able to improve. I feel like I'm mm -hmm. obsessed with improving. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I'd be like, I'm never gonna write a book that's better than this book. So I might as well just throw in the towel. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But um, you just gotta think like, well, life is still gonna happen. So what are you gonna be doing? Like sitting there being annoyed or doing stuff? Mm -hmm. That's so true, and I, I think that's that's the case with every with anything you do, especially if you're a writer. Um, I always find that my first draft of a play, I literally freeze. I'm like, I can't do it. It's going to be rubbish. But of course, <laughs> the first draft is always rubbish. Like, just, exactly. just write it. Just push through. <laughs> so um, that is uh, good advice that I should listen to. You. Um, <laughs> but when I'm like crying in my bed, I'll remember this. Um, Someone said, would you kill, would you ever kill off a main character or a love interest? 
Uh, no, because if I did, romance readers worldwide would rise up and slaughter me and I would deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> there'd be forums, there'd be threads, there'd be think pieces <laughs> and, and YouTube videos and interviews. That a lot. You'd be cancelled. Um, it'd be, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Please don't kill anyone. I love them all. Um, I'm going to get back to the questions in the chat, but I'm going to go back to mine first. Um, so if you weren't writing, what would you be doing? Ah, well, um, at one point I was studying law. Uh, okay. Lawyer. Yeah. But it's questionable as to whether I would have succeeded in that endeavour. <laughs> um, I would probably be doing like social media marketing or management, that sort of thing. Yeah, hard, hard work, but good, good hmm. work. I mean, yeah, hard work. My Our social media manager, she's just great. I couldn't, but good, good choice. <laughs> um, <laughs> So what's the best advice you've been given throughout your writing career? I think, you know, the best kind of advice or like energy, attitude, approach that I've been given by so many kind of very seasoned and experienced writers is to always keep going, even, you know, as things change, as you change, as your process changes, your idea of what you're trying to do changes, just keep moving forward however you can. Everything's gonna change around you and it's okay as long as you're still determined and you're moving in the right direction. Mm, that is wonderful advice. And it, it reminds me of this like picture I saw where they were like, you know, you're down here in the corner and your dream is up here and everyone thinks it's just a straight path, but actually the path is like, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, just keep going and you're always going to be one step uh, further towards it, nearer to your goal than you was when you started. So exactly. But on the flip side of this, if this is different, well, that was the advice I was giving to you. What advice would you give to other authors? Hmm. Mainly me. Really help. <laughs> <laughs> For me, the most important thing is knowing what you want, because I feel like once you have a goal or a destination, you can figure out the roadmap. You can just keep mm. moving forward. But without knowing where you're trying to be, it's a lot harder to know how to get there. Mm. That's great advice. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> No, that clicks. Yes. <laughs> Let's go back to the chat before. Um, I, um, I really want to make sure we get everyone's questions because I know what it's like to be a fan. Um, someone said um, in another interview, you mentioned had originally meant to be a rock star rather than an artist. Would you ever write a rock star story? Um. I really enjoy Ooh. rock star and like music based stories. Um, I actually recently re finished rereading Sweet Hand by NG Peltier, where the hero is like a music producer, um, mm -hmm. which I really enjoyed. And I'd probably be more likely to write something like that than a classic rock star simply because I feel like to do it the way I would want to do it would require more musical knowledge than I currently have. Um, like, yeah. <laughs> so I might write like a retired rock star who doesn't do much anymore. <laughs> and you can just refer to his path tonight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that makes sense. I like that idea. I like that idea. Um, Emma says, who are your favourite contemporary romance authors? <sighs> so many. Okay. I know, right? <laughs> and when you do the spot, you're like, uh, no one? No. Head <laughs> <empty>. <laughs> um, I really, really love, I'm just going to say them randomly as they come to me. Uh, Reese Ryan, mm. um, Kennedy Ryan, they have the same last name, so. <laughs> um, Sally Thorne has a new book out today, which I'm super excited about. Um, Dylan Allen. Um, 
Ooh, I'm being so slow right now. <laughs> no, oh my gosh, you're not being I mean, to be fair, you've given us a lot. So, oh, thank you. Okay. Uh, oh, Jodie Slaughter, yeah. Oh, amazing. what a great name. What a I'm great right. name. <laughs> um, thank you. Um, someone... Um, Irene, I don't know if it's like, what do you think I'll just gain social energy? Um, this is actually an interesting question. So she says, in those moments where you face writer's block, what do you do to gain inspiration again, or do you wait it out? Um, and I was actually told never to ask a writer about writer's block because some of them don't believe in it, which I didn't realize was a thing. So, um, that's the question. <laughs> I, I've heard the not believing in writer's block thing. And I feel like it's just a very fancy way to say that they don't hold with writer's block. But like, if someone says writer's block, I know what you're talking about, right? <laughs> so for me, when I am feeling that way, it's usually because like I've neglected some of my other needs and I'm pushing too hard, too fast. And I need to take a step back and like get some rest or do something fun or like have a life again and refill the well. Um, mm, mm. and that usually fixes the problem yeah yeah I agree and they always say whenever you're doing any sort of writing is sometimes just leave it for a week sometimes mm. just don't think about it you can go back to it or you know longer than a week if you need it um, but thank you um, for that answer Anna says since you've done self both self-publishing and conventional publishing do you feel there are more constraints now that you're not calling all the shots it's an interesting question mm. I don't necessarily feel constrained because I can and will still self-publish. So if I have a story that I think, you know, this isn't going to be commercial enough for my publisher for whatever reason, then I can just self-publish it, which is one of the many reasons why I love self-publishing. Um, but in terms of books that I've kind of signed on to write for the publisher, I usually propose those stories because I feel like they're ideas that work well with the publisher's right, designs. Yeah. Um, and it hasn't yet happened that I've wanted to go in a direction with one of those stories and had my editor just be like, no. So I don't know. <laughs> Which is good. Which is really good. I think there are pros and cons for both, but it's nice that you have the opportunity to do both. Which mm -hmm. is, it's, it's a great thing um, to do. Um, and then... Oh, <laughs> okay, that's all for the questions. That's just a lot of comments that are making me laugh. Um, <laughs> let me go back to my questions now. Um, oh yeah, that actually, this is this is this is this is me being nosy. So, <laughs> do you have like what what can we expect? Series coming out, but what else? Can, is there anything else we can expect, or would you look out for? Um. I also have my first young adult romance that I'm working on, um, which is very exciting. <laughs> um, it's contemporary, so it's kind of going to be like my adult romances, but, you know, different because young people. <laughs> PG? Yeah. So it, it's basically like they were best friends and grew up together and then like a big fallout happened and now they're enemies and academic rivals and they have to do this wilderness enrichment thing together, but they hate each other. So. <laughs> okay. I love it. Finally, one of your books I can give to my sisters to read now. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, that's great. That sounds, yeah, that sounds really, really good. What, why, why we, what's making you want to kind of delve into the young adult um, sector? So it was kind of weird because, like I mentioned, I've been reading romance for a long time. I kind of stopped reading YA. Um, and then before Christmas, I think, I picked up Cemetery Boys, um, which was like an amazing YA romance. And also there's ghosts, which was pretty sick. Um, wow. And I was like, oh, actually, yeah, why are you just slap? Like, I kind of forgot, but this is great. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, Joy Revolution is the imprint that I'm writing with. Um, and it was started by Nicola and David Yoon. And they were kind of looking for authors and story ideas. And I was like, I could have a story idea. <laughs> So I started reading and watching a lot more YA and realizing like that it was 
just like a really cute, sweet, emotional kind of section of romance that I maybe had not been fully appreciating. Um, and so this kind of idea blossomed. And like you mentioned, being able to give the book to your sisters, my oldest nephew is always like, can I read your books? And I'm like, no. <laughs> Absolutely not. But now... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's fair. And and also the fact that you're adding to the inclusivity and the representation in that, you know, field as well is also really needed as well. So yeah, it's a natural progression. We love to see it. <laughs> um does any I just want to check before because this has been great, by the way. Thank you so much. We've gotten so much out of it. I just want to check if anybody watching has any last questions, because I know sometimes people can be a bit shy and hold back but if you do please do pop them in the chat now before uh, we kind of wrap um oh, just gonna give them a moment um and also oh one came in and also just to say that talia will be um answering some quick fire questions for us um and the oh, i blanked out for a minute and that content will be available um exclusively to our patrons so if you want to see that then hit the link in the description which as i'm saying i realize actually may not be in the description but it will be by the end of this broadcast so <laughs> do that it's also in our instagram bio if you want to um sign up um so someone says um you've been reading and writing for quite a while now how has your style of writing developed through the years and also where do you hope to be in the next five years so that's two questions. How has your style of writing developed? Where do you want to be in five years? I feel like my writing has become more confident and feels like the stories I'm telling and the characters I'm kind of, the way I'm conveying them is more true to the imagination I've always had, but maybe haven't been able to unlock on paper. Mm. Um, and so, you know, in five years, I would really love to be able to write something in a world that is kind of bigger and more complex than I've been able to do thus far because I love reading like sci-fi and fantasy and I love reading mysteries. Um, and I feel like I have stories in me that I'm not at a level to write effectively right now, mm. but in five years, I would love to be able to do that. <laughs> Well, practice as well. Like the more you do something, the better the, uh, you become at it. It's just exactly. sort of anyway. Um, I've seen a question, and it's true. I want this, so your answer has to be yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> so, would you consider writing a short novel about Gigi? <laughs> I do this thing where I write the series, and then I'm like, okay, that's done. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> And that's um, where I'm at. <laughs> fair enough. No, it's fair enough. I think when you spend so long with the story and the characters as well, you need a break from them. They're, they're yeah. always in your head. So <laughs> that's fair enough. If, you know, you ever wanted to, we would be here to accept that. Just to let you know. <laughs> um, someone says, do you have a favourite book series of yours that you've written? Um, <laughs> excuse me. That's okay, my love. We've been talking for a long time. <laughs> I feel like I love obviously all my books, and the book that I've most recently written is usually my favorite because I'm like, oh, I did a great job. <laughs> but also, I always, when people ask this question, I always think of um, a book I wrote called Work for It, which. Mm is the only book I've written in the first person. So maybe that's why I love it so much, I don't know. But basically it's about a guy whose life is kind of going terribly. So he runs away to a fruit farm to avoid his responsibilities and falls in love with a giant fruit farmer. <laughs> okay. Just a lot of vibes <laughs> and sunshine. Sounds like a good time. <laughs> it sounds like a very good time and I, I want it. I want to read it. Yeah, great. I'm imagining some flowers. I don't know. I don't know why. What does a fruit farm even look like? Who knows? But it's there. 
Um, thank you, honestly, thank you so, so much for joining us. Um, I like, really appreciate it. And it's just been, I can't, I mean, I can't believe it's been an hour. It just, it's just Hello. flown by. There was so much I wanted to talk to you about. And I'm glad we've got to hit all of the points. Um, just as a little housekeeping, we've put the link for the Patreon questions in the uh, private chat. Can you see that? I'll just make sure you can see it. This is just between me and you. Do you? Can you see it? Just so that I know if it. Um, if I end it, you'll have that information. Yes. Okay, great. Um, but now I can do a proper close. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us um, today. It's been great. As part of our Black Girl season, we really, really appreciate it. Um, Everyone who, to everyone who's watching, obviously, please go and support Talia. Go and follow her on her Instagram and obviously buy her books so she can get her coins. Like, that's so important. <laughs> um, and please do subscribe to our channel because we do do a lot of um, interviews with amazing Black British women. So, um, yeah, please do subscribe and like this video. And, yeah, thank you guys so much for coming. And thank you, Talia, for being here as well. I'll see you soon. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, everyone. Hi guys. I feel like we need an outro. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm ending it. I'm ending it. <laughs>